ligaments that they support the uterus and the ovaries. So you have the uterosacral ligament. Remember what I told you? The uterosacral ligament is a ligament that goes from the uterus to the sacrum, which is posterior. So it's like you have a cord holding you posteriorly, which means that if you have this cord holding the uterus to the posterior aspect, the uterus cannot move anteriorly. Now you have another ligament that goes from the uterus to the anterior abdominal wall. So this cord is holding you from moving posteriorly. One tip that I told you last week is that round ligament is the name of the ligament that holds the uterus to the anterior abdominal wall. And you also have another round ligament in your body, which is the round ligament in the liver. And that round ligament is also anterior. So round ligaments in the liver and also in the uterus are facing anterior. And you can make that easy connection. Now, besides the round ligament and the uterosacral ligament, you have the suspensor ligament of the ovary. It's a ligament that suspends the ovary into the places where it should be. And you have the ovarian ligament right here connecting the ovary to the uterus. The cardinal ligaments, basically, they make up the floor of the pelvic cavity. And you had that one that was very broad, that was conveniently named, broad ligament. That is what divides the, uh, the pelvic cavity into anterior and posterior portions, basically. You need to know all these ligaments because they are very important to hold the uterus in place. And also the ovary in place. When we look at an image from a cadaver, we can see here that we have the uterus. And this top part of the uterus is what we call fundus. Can you notice that the uterine tube, they click right in there to the uterus, but basically the uterine tubes, they're clicking, and then you have this little bump in the uterus, which is above it. Let me show you in a different view. Here you go. So this is a heel, uh, uh, human uterus removed from a patient that had a hysterectomy done. And when you look this, the uterus, here you have the cervix, and this is the uterine tubes. And this part of the uterus is what we call fundus, which is at the end of the uterine cavity. When we study the stomach, do you remember that the stomach had that shape, that then you had the fundus of the stomach and you had the esophagus? Uh -huh. The fundus of the esophagus was above the connection between the stomach and the esophagus, because fundus is really the ending of an organ. Does that make sense? It's the same structure you have here, that's why this was named the ending, or the fundus of the uterus. These are the fingri. You can literally see that the fingri is not connected to the ovaries. They are separate, and that's why you can have the ectopic pregnancies that I mentioned to you before. The ovary will expel the egg in the pelvic cavity, and the fingri needs to be very attentive to pick it up and move it into the uterine tube, and then the egg will eventually get into the uterine cavity. 